Hey, what's up guys? Tommy14 here. Today we are going to be driving the first ever Grand Prix, official Grand Prix car to have won the Grand Prix Championship in the 1950 season, which was the Alfa Romeo 158 driven by Giuseppe Farina and Juan Manuel Fangio. And uh, yeah, this is going to be some kind of experience for sure. Without further ado, let's get into it. So here we are then, we've loaded into Assetto Corsa. Very weird position being sat bolted upright with a massive wooden steering wheel in front. The dials are uh, as big as anything. The, I love the windscreen in this thing like that is going to do much. You see photos back in the older days with Fangio and Moss and Farina himself and they're just plastered in oil all over their faces because of course they didn't have proper helmets. So yeah, this is going to be a interesting experience this is so cool to see though in VR I've always loved VR unfortunately my computer doesn't quite have a good enough uh, GPU to run proper graphic settings in VR however this is a cool illustration anyway let's have a delve into the setup which I'm sure these cars didn't particularly have much of 186 mile an hour with no seat belts we're actually driving in overalls, but back then they just have a t-shirt and jeans and, you know, bog standard shoes, no gloves, I don't think, and just a, a leather hat, basically. You couldn't even call it a helmet. Uh, fuel, let's put that down to make it as light as we can. Uh, and then, uh, let's just, yeah. That'll probably do us for now. Let's actually have a look around the car in full glory of VR. And as you can see, pretty, um, pretty extraordinary. Look at that exhaust. Wow, okay then. Anyway, let's get this thing out onto the track <laughs> look at the gear shift on there that is crazy oh my god this is such a weird experience oh my god this is a very different experience to modern Grand Prix cars I'm telling you link to this mod is in the description below um it is free which is always nice i don't know how accurate or how representative it will be but i can't decide whether i should look over the <laughs> over the windscreen or through it <laughs> oh this is just hilarious so cool. let's, let's give it a little oh okay it's i think right from the offset it's probably got a bit too much grip for my liking I would imagine with those skinny tyres that you can see it would have a bit less grip but uh also it feels very underpowered oh brakes are quite wild oh no oh no oh no Oh, that's more like the side I was expecting. It takes a lot of getting used to this. This does. Lots of understeer, of course. Cars back in the 50s, front engines. Oh, just listen to the power. Listen to that soundtrack. Even in the 50s, Formula 1 cars still sounded extraordinary. There's a drift. Hey, so a very interesting car, this is a 1.5 litre supercharged straight 8 engine which I don't think we've had an engine of any kind like that since the early 50s or definitely late 50s but about 425 horsepower I believe this thing has which is doesn't sound like a lot and, well, most supercars and even sports cars now have more brake horsepower than that, that, but you have to consider how skinny these tyres are and just the amount of weight there is, well, the lack of weight there is at the back of this car, of course, being front-engined, you're prone to a fair bit of understeer, which is why 
you get a lot of sliding when you look at old footage, especially from the 1950s, even the 60s cars to be honest, when they started becoming mid-engine thanks to the likes of Colin Chapman with Lotus and the Cosworth engines, but oh, just bucket loads of understeer. But yeah, 425 brake horsepower in the 50s. Of course, what makes this car very special is that it's the first Grand Prix car to ever... Oh, ah, ah, oh, shit, as we go off. This was the first ever F1 car to win a Formula 1 Grand Prix Championship and the first Grand Prix car to win the first ever Grand Prix at the British Grand Prix. A lot of first evers. And that was by none other than Giuseppe Farina, who I believe didn't win that many world titles for in a Grand Prix racing as it was back then. Of course, Formula 1 wasn't given its name until 70s, I want to say. Maybe even 80s. I'm not too sure when exactly I will probably put a pop-up saying when. But yeah, in Grand Prix racing, he didn't win too many titles. However, of course, won the first ever Drivers' Championship. Alfa Romeo that year would have won the Constructors' Championship had it have been around of course, 1958. We're out of fuel. We're out of fuel. Unbelievable. Right, so let's head back out on circuit, hopefully not run out of fuel. But yeah, post or pre-war design this car was, so 1938 actually is when this car was first designed. Of course, Formula 1 cars back then, or Grand Prix cars, you had a design and you could stick with it for, uh, well, in this case it went from 38 all the way through to the 50s, so that's almost 20 year lifespan, whereas in Formula 1 now you're lucky if you get a car <laughs> through half the season before they change it to a V-spec. We saw McLaren in 2018 have to change hers to a V-spec, Force India in 2017 to a B-spec, but this car, yeah, pre-war design, certainly feels it to be honest with the big steering wheel, the aluminium everywhere, the skinny tyres, but yeah, Farina actually outscored uh, Fangio in the first official Grand Prix season by three points, however, Fangio did have a lot more retirements to his name, so you could say Farina was rather lucky that season, maybe comparable to the Nico Rosberg, perhaps only person to beat Fangio, or only teammate to have beat Fangio to a championship. <laughs> this is such a special car, I mean, without this, you know, Formula 1 cars would be different, you have to say, because <laughs> that is so low rev, so little power, such little mechanical grip, but by god is it so much fun. Yeah, Formula 1 just... Everyone complains about how the halo has changed. complaining about the halo changing the origins of Formula 1. Well, I'm sorry, Formula 1 did not look like how it did in the 50s. It doesn't sound like how it did in the 50s, so I think everyone has pretty much dropped the complaints of the halo. As we go understate again through that corner, need to learn to break a bit earlier there, but everyone has dropped the complaints of the halo. But don't forget, head protection was there in 1950 with this Granted, pathetic windscreen, but it was there. Oh, this is actually such a cool mod. As I say, may not be the most accurate, may graphic. I don't know, because I haven't got the graphics turned up to the highest in all fairness, so it would be unfair to say that. But from a physics standpoint, yeah, feels like a 1950s Grand Prix car. I don't really have any complaints about it. I think it's a solid job. Um, oh, even the sound sounds pretty. <laughs> oh no, I've overcooked it just a little bit. But yeah, there's no point even... There's no point even trying to get a lap time from this thing because 
I'm just gonna have too much fun sliding it. I tell you what, Grand Prix Racing back there. That massive respect to the likes of Fangio, Moss, Farina, all those guys that raced in the 50s. I mean, yes, the 60s and 70s were, and even the 80s to some extent, were still a, such a dangerous time for Formula One. I mean, safety was nowhere near where it should have been, but 1950 to 59 the early 60s definitely you know where formula one was at its worst for safety safety was definitely not even spoken about really i mean no seat belts no real head protection no helmets t-shirts jeans no fireproof clothing but if you've ever seen pit stops as well in the 50s i mean people are having cigarettes while putting the fuel in it, it, a crazy time, but I mean, you can even see from the runoff. I mean, this is a 67 layout of Silverstone, but as I say, this is a 1950 car, this is a 67 layout, and can you really say it's that safe? I mean, what you've got hay bales and brick walls. Another interesting stat about this car, which people kind of disregard, is that it's actually, despite what people say about McLaren being the only team to nearly come close to winning every race in the season. This car actually did. It won all six classified European Grand Prix races, which were in the 1950 season. Indianapolis was on the Formula 1 calendar, however, was not a championship. A Formula 1 regulated race in the Formula 1 Championship. Very confusing. But um so technically speaking, this car actually did win every Formula 1 Grand Prix race in the 1950 season. So yeah, I thought that was quite interesting. We're gonna go for a lap. I'll try and be quiet. Let's see how we get on. Thanks for watching. Until next time. So there you are guys, that has been the Alfa Romeo 158 1950s Grand Prix car. Hopefully you enjoyed this video, if you did leave a like and subscribe, and until next time, take care.